I don't care about the Senate vote or whatever. I don't, or maybe it's the House. I don't know. Whatever one is going to vote next on the Respect for Marriage Act. Um, I uh, saw a couple things about this, uh, you know, a week or two ago that made me go like, I'm just going to ignore this. Um, you know, it's not worth reading into, but I was reading a couple things this morning. And, uh, you know, I'm going to dissect some, uh, some shit here. So there's an article here on Fox. We all know Fox. Maybe you don't know Fox. I'm not sure, but I know Fox. Progressives grumble as Respect for Marriage Act advances, quote, I hate the Senate bill. Now, again, why would Fox run a headline like this? Obviously, you know why. Uh, they love to promote and uh, and throw in the air all sorts of, you know, Democratic Party infighting. Um, and so, because they think it helps them. I'm not necessarily sure uh, that it helps them, but uh, either way. Complaints from some progressive Democrats about the much-heralded Respect for Marriage Act are on the rise as they realize that the legislation often labeled in the press as same-sex marriage bill would not actually require states to recognize same-sex marriages. So again, you might be confused. I was confused when I first started looking into this. Um, the Respect for Marriage Act does not require states to recognize same-sex marriages. So what does it do? What does the bill do? Well, let's let's go back to the name of it. Respect for marriage. The bill essentially is they vote in favor of respecting marriage. Oh, I respect this. What? Yeah, they respect it. Senate Majority Leader Cuck Schumer deny lauded the legislation as, quote, a momentous step forward for greater justice for LGBTQ Americans, but complaints from the far left started surfacing as the Senate passed the bill last week. Washington Post columnist Jonathan Capehart, who is gay, said in a column that he supports the bill, but admitted that the more closely he looks at it, the more my joy diminishes. Quote, what the act does not do is require states to issue marriage licenses in contravention of state law, he wrote. What? Charlotte Clymer, former press secretary for the Human Rights Campaign and LGBTQ plus activist, put it more sharply in a blog post, quote, I hate the Senate bill and we need to pass it, she said, adding that, quote, it sucks and, quote, it's our only real option. Democrats in Congress whipped up the bill after the Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas issued a concurring opinion in the case Dobbs v. Jackson's Women Health Organization, which overturned Roe v. Wade. There, he said, in light of the decision to let states decide abortion, the court should also reconsider all of its court substantive due process precedents, including Obergefell v. Hodges case that took same-sex marriage out of the hands of the states and into a uh, and said it was a right guaranteed by the constitution no other justices joined thomas but that opinion became a major campaign issue for democrats and spurred lawmakers of both parties to write legislation aimed at requiring states to recognize same-sex marriage in case the obergefell precedent fell but if the respect for marriage act passes it would not go so far as to require states to permit same-sex marriages which is what some progressives uh which is what has some progressives disappointed instead it would require the federal government to recognize same-sex marriages performed in states where they're illegal okay wait whoa whoa whoa, whoa. where's my phone everyone go get your phone and go hold that shit so you're telling me the Respect for Marriage Act, right, only legalizes same-sex marriages where they're already legal?
What? What? I mean, I guess the point is it re it creates like a federal registry. But what? The act would also require states to recognize same-sex marriages in other states for the purposes of distributing benefits and wouldn't let them interfere with the federal recognition of those marriages. But otherwise, each state would still be able to define marriage as they see fit and would not require to issue licenses or permits for same-sex marriages to take place in their state. So what this means is uh, if you go to another state to get married and then go back to the state that you couldn't get married in, the state will have to respect the marriage in that instance, but they won't be forced to grant a new license. Imagine that. Oh, yeah, we have to fly across the country to get married. Why would, like, imagine wasting that money. Just move across the country. Get the fuck out of there. But, like, what? Tim Schultz, president of the First Amendment Partnership. Oh, boy. Told Fox News Digital the passage of RMA is about political realism. And that both sides have to cede some ground in order to turn the language into law. Schultz noted that the bill doesn't go as far as banning states from making gay marriage illegal and includes an amendment by Sens Susan Collins and Tammy Baldwin aimed at protecting religious liberty. Oh, great! Religious liberty! Right! When I'm thinking about gay people having equal rights, you know, we gotta factor in religious liberty. How does two people who aren't religious living their lives affect religious people? What? I, I'm just like, what? What is religious liberty? And why is it religious liberty? Why not just liberty? Well, the answer is because if it was just liberty, then gay people would be allowed to get married. No questions asked. That's why they got to add religious in there because they think their religion supersedes your right to live your life. That's what they think. That's what religious people think. They actually believe this shit. Quote, the interest groups on the left, I think, are begrudgingly admitting that these religious protections had to be in the bill to pass. Some of them are saying that's an affirmative good. Others are saying, well, I guess this is what you have to do to attract Republicans. I'm not saying they feel religious liberty in their soul. Quote, I think this is actually a big political deal, Schultz added. I think that legally the RMA is not a huge deal, and I think that that's why people are hyperventilating for no good reason. So yeah, it essentially doesn't really do anything. It doesn't. Schultz says the overturning of Obergefell is very unlikely. Oh, that's. I wonder what this guy said about um, Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey. But anyway, um, so the Respect for Marriage Act essentially does nothing. I mean, really, what it does is it creates like a federal registry rather than just having it in the states, but like realistically speaking it doesn't do anything and i love this idea that of both sides yeah human rights both sides one group thinks that the other group are sinners and are going to hell and need to be like thrown in jail to prevent themselves from sinning the other group is like oh i love my boyfriend uwu both sides. Both sides? Isn't that crazy? Think about this, man. Religious people? Religious people. We cannot make progress while people still believe in this shit. I mean, it's just, it's that simple. Religious people have to go. Where do they have to go? I say, library? Google? The bookstore? Elementary school? They gotta go somewhere. Because they are fucking stupid motherfuckers. Religious people, and I'm saying this as a monolith, they're all fucking dumb, every single one of them, need to shut the fuck up. They need to shut the fuck up. The idea that I would know someone's personal religion, if they are religious, is offensive to me. 
I don't want to know your religion. I don't want to know what you believe uh, when it comes to magical fairies. I don't want to know what you believe when it comes to zombies. I'm not interested. Unless I ask you. But you know what these Christians, right, especially because it's always fucking Christians. How do you know if someone's a Christian? Don't worry, they'll fucking tell you. They don't shut the fuck up. They'll do this fucking thing, you know, just randomly. You ever, you ever like at a social event and someone's a Christian and they just randomly do this? Like, you ever see that shit? I see it all. What? What are you doing? Why are you touching yourself? What is that? Like, they're always like whispering to themselves something about God and Jesus and thank you for this meal. I mean, I'm saying, I'm telling you this, right? Religious extremism only can exist it can only exist when you have quote unquote good christians enabling the structures that put up and uh you know prop up the religious extremism if religious extremism really was such a minority people love to tell me there's good christians there's good christians oh don't worry there's the good christians they got this the, the good christians oh yeah the good christians they keep telling me this but Again, good Christians, by being Christians, and by propelling and propagating the stupid God garbage, what they do is they give cover for the extremists. The extremists are a minority. That's correct. But they are a minority that cloaks themselves in being the majority because good Christians do fucking nothing about it. If good Christians all realize that God was made up and that Jesus is a fairy tale, you know what would happen? Right? All of the structures that put up, you know, again, tax exemption status for churches and other stuff, right? All of these structures would magically, again, poof, out of existence. They would all collapse. Why? Because if you have no legs, you have no table. And these so-called good Christians, in this analogy or metaphor, are the legs and the extremists are the table. Without the legs, that table is going to fall on the floor. And then what's the point of fucking having a table? Let's just eat off the floor. So again, uh, this is why I don't believe in good Christians. Now, you feel you can feel free to debate me on this, but there is no good Christian, right? I'm sorry. There's just not. And I'd, I'd go as far as to say that there's no such thing as any good religious person because as a whole, what their net effect is in reality is by endorsing and giving uh, credence and un- do respect and positions of power to the crazy people because if the crazy people were treated for what they really are crazy motherfuckers instead of oh they just they believe in jesus but they really believe in jesus 